Well, hello. Um, Juvendale Holsteins is a place we go every year um, in this class. It's a really nice Thai stall. Um, odds are we're not going to get back, but if we do, we'll get out there and visit. We'll find a way, some way, shape, or form. If we don't get back this semester, they're always um, very generous about taking visitors. Tell them from your, you're from Morrisville. Uh, it's a really nice place, and I'll kind of talk you through it today and hopefully get a feel for what the place is and maybe want to go visit at some so Juvendale Holstein's history. Uh, you can read this page as well as I can. Uh, they are over just outside of Kaz. They sell raw milk. Last I knew it was $4 a gallon. And they're big on that. They have some a long history of uh, very high quality uh, show cattle. They don't show much anymore, but they have been very generous with our sale in the past. Pick of the herd several times. Uh, they came up here from Pennsylvania. This is the third farm they've been on. They intended to retire up here, but they couldn't stay away. So they redid the barn that they had. And the redos are really what we're going to focus on today. Um, there Again, they sell raw milk. And one of the things we would have talked about if we had gone there was an opportunity to sell raw milk. What does that take? What do you have to do? What does that require? And it helps pay the bills there. They're not a, a huge percentage of their uh, milk output in any game. given day goes into the refrigerator, but enough to help things out, especially through those tough times we've had over the last couple of years. Um, this is one of the handouts they have there raw versus pasteurized milk, what are the benefits and differences? So uh, they started in Kaz with a barn that was pretty run down. They took a long look at it and they invested a lot of money to make the system work and work well. So one of the first things they did was they made the walls taller. So you have the truss systems on top. There really wasn't a hay mow up there. Um, you can see it if you're ever there. But they were able to build new walls, lift up the, the rafter section up top, and then insert the new walls. So they did one side first, put in the new walls, and they lifted the other side up and redid it that way. So one time, so the ceilings are much higher than the barn they inherited. I think they added like two feet in there. So you've got a lot more space. It's a lot more open up. It's a much brighter, more airy kind of barn. It's a much more pleasant place, as they say, to work in. And that's one of the things they were going for. Um, it's also a lot easier to ventilate. They also sloped the floor when they put it in. And the reason for this is so the floor matches the slope of the pipeline. If you're in a tie stall barn and have a pipeline that goes around like one in my uh, youth, the um, attachments for the milking machine, the, the, the pulsator connections, the milk line connections are very low as you get toward the milk house and the receiver jar. But as you go away, we're going up an inch or so every 10 feet um, to keep that milk flowing on a farm like my dad's where you had a, um, a significant distance from the milk house to the other end it, you know as a kid I couldn't reach it I barely could reach it as an adult I usually had to stand on one of the stall dividers to get up there so one of the things they did here is they sloped the barn to match the slope of the pipeline so the distance from the stall bed or the section where you're standing to reach up to connect the pulsator to connect the milk line to the pipeline is always at the same height and that's a real nice feature as you go through the barn it makes things a little short on one end but um and it did cost a lot to put that kind of cement in there uh, you're probably looking at about two foot from one end of the barn to the other uh, 
but it makes a difference on a day to day, saving yourself time every day going through, and the drop gets much deeper as you get to that end of the barn where the clean out is um, and where they fill the manure spreader on the what would be the south end of the barn. That is also the shorter distance between the floor and the ceiling, it slopes up to that end. So if we look at the ventilation in Juvendale, what we have here, um, my measurements of the farm when I did it, uh, go, so we go through, we've got 58,000, 59,000 cubic feet in the barn. And then we have various levels that we have to um, the three different temperatures and then what kind of square feet or CFM do we need to get through the system? Um, to ventilate the barn. If we look down, uh, what are the inlets and outlet sizes? So we're looking, if we look at the uh, 500 feet per minute, five and a half miles an hour, we're looking at eight square feet, um, 29 square feet mild, 118 in hot weather. The barn is tunnel ventilated, so you're going from the north end, which is where the um, uh driveway is the the retail area and then the air comes in there and then flows the length of the barn to five fans at the other end so uh we can we'll show you that we can like, handle most of this except for the, some of these higher ends um 118 we can get pretty close to so we're looking at, again, how big our inlets and outlets have to be. We went through and we added up. They've got four windows on that north end. They've got a door, eight by six, and they have two vents that are connected from the uh, T area. You've got kind of a T barn up top. So they're coming in through the loft, and these have a sliding um opening here you're nine foot long and then three quarters of a foot high and this is kind of a guillotine a board slides up and down we can open those up when we need to so we're looking at about 90 square feet of openings in the winter they'll have one or two uh, windows open and that gets you your minimum area here the eight foot so one of those probably gets the job done or two open halfway at the box stalls at that end, and then the fans would pull to the other end. You've got one three foot fan on the side, um, probably doing around 60,000 CFM. You've got five four foot fans. We've measured them at 10 miles an hour and 12 miles an hour. So you're looking at um, 13,000 to 11,000 CFM per fan, looking at anywhere from 55,000 to 66,000 will cross the five fans. So you're easily going to get your needs met up here um, to uh, pull the air through. You could turn fans on and off to adjust what you need depending on the time of the year. We're going to have a little limitations here. We can't quite get enough opening there to um, match. This here is short for what it would need here, but if the fan air is moving a little bit faster, um, maybe we can get away with it, um, 73, 87. So we're a little short. If we open some windows on the side, maybe um, that'll help, or maybe the air moves through a little bit faster. Um, it feels, at least when I've been there, a very fresh barn. The air flows through kind of nice. So um, again, a tunnel ventilated system, five fans on one end of the barn, the openings on the north end of the barn, air flows through. It's a newer construction, so all the windows are pretty tight, or the doors seal very well. Um, so the flow right in front of the cows, especially these two vents here are designed to go in front of the cows. They're on the uh, nose side, it's a tail to tail barn. Um, so the noses are to the outside walls. These slits are above the cows. They come in and kind of run by their noses the length of the barn.
Another interesting feature about Juvendale Holsteins is that not all the saws are the same size. And the way they go about it, is, or the philosophy behind it, is that you've got big mature cows, and then as the barn goes from one end to the other, you've got um, small first calf heifers in the, there. So the rear end or the backs of the stalls and this tail-to-tail -tail operation is uh, pretty straight. But you have a taper on the front side, and you're looking at six, eight inches from one end of the barn to the other. Well, I don't know what, we'll look at it in a minute. So the stalls down at this end of the barn are wider and longer than the stalls up at the short end of the barn, the south end of the barn. So they can put animals by their size depending on where they need to. So big animals go down here and basically you've got your big animals here and they run all the way to your smallest animals there. So sorting your animals by size um, allows the animals to be in more of a custom fit than if we made all the stalls the same size. So that was a conscious decision. It required a little bit more work up front, but you've got animals that don't seem to be beat up as much. The hawk scores look good. They look comfortable in the stalls. Uh, I think there's a much better fit and the animals are, are very, very clean. Part of that is just how meticulous they are about keeping the animals clean. But also I think it's the design of the stalls, the length of the stalls, and we'll see the grate at the end here that they do. And that's probably a big uh, part of all that. So if we look at the dimensions of our stalls, if we compare, this is the north end of the barn, north end of the barn, uh, south end of the barn, south end of the barn. So our stall width goes from 52-ish to 48, 49, depending on how we're looking at things. So where you went, so one side of the barn versus the other, it really doesn't matter too much. Uh, curve distance, so we're looking at 72 at the big end. Uh, a little bit bigger on one side than the other, and then we're going down to about 60 there. So about seven, six, seven inches shorter on one end of the barn to the other. Not real noticeable when you're standing in the barn, but that makes a huge difference between our mature, big mature cows and our average first calf heifer. Distance to the neck rail, we've got neck rails are down and a little farther forward than what we normally expect. And the reason we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, height of the dividers, they're a little bit shorter than we'd expect, but again, they're sort of matching what they've done here. They've taken a different tact. We're putting the neck rails uh, down and forward. Uh, and they're a uh, brisket locator, a little bit more aggressive. Some we're used to seeing curb height in the back, it depends on where you are in the barn, um, how high the floor is or slope the floor is, and things like that. He likes a three quarter percent slope from front to back. Uh, he's played with that a lot, and that's what he's come up with. And if you were there, he talked about you want enough, but not too much, you don't want the animals shift in their weight you want them to stand natural but it's slightly uphill and a little bit of flow for the back for um uh urine and stuff what they've done with the uh neck rail or the, here is they've moved it down and forward the idea is that the juvendale Holsteins is they want the cow with a natural head position. They don't want the neck rail where it would normally be when she's standing. And they'd like her head to be above the uh, rail. So they she's got kind of a top line and neck, head, neck. We want a more natural position. This tends to be right where the cows want to be. So he says, I have a preference, so I'm going to move that down and forward. So we have a little bit farther forward, a little bit farther down, uh, makes it a little bit more difficult to clean. But he says, I prefer the natural position. I don't want the cows 
bucking against this. I want them to have their head up if they want to in a natural position. I don't want them to force their head down or force their head in an uncomfortable position. Another thing he'll, he'd talk about if we went to visit is the placement of his trainers. Again, a tie stall barn. We have trainers in there. When he initially put them in, they were two inches too far forward. And he, uh, Vince will talk about, well, that's not where we wanted to be. They weren't accomplishing what they wanted. I had to bite the bullet and go through and buy the metal to extend things out and move things back two inches. He said, because of that, I save a tremendous amount of time each day. There was a bunch of things that had to happen, a bunch of things that had to do. It was a couple days worth of work, but in the long run, I saved time and my cows are much cleaner because of it. So he talks about making mistakes and making the corrections, looking at the cows. That's how he evolved to that neck rail position over three different barns. Um, he basically, when he went and he put this barn in, Everything was what he always wanted it to be. So he talks about make a mistake. Okay, you bite the bullet, you fix your mistake, and you're going to benefit from that moving forward. Cost him some metal, it cost him some drilling, but he's got it bare where it is, and his animals are much cleaner for it. Another interesting feature is the grates behind the animals. All the grates that are in um, over the the drop in the tie stall are custom fit. So what he did was you have this red here represents the grates. You have some angle iron here. You got some angle iron here. You've got some angle iron up here and a pipe that runs the length of the barn more or less or for each section if they're doing um, I think more or less every cow's got its own grate. So these are all custom welded in place. He uses a square bar across the top, and we make sure that they're close enough together that the cows can't go through there. He says, it cost me a little bit more, but I've never had a toe injury. So paying up front to save some money or save some cows later on was very important. The unique feature here is you've got a mattress coming to the back of the stall that comes up against this pipe. And one of the things that uh, Vince talks about and Julie talks about is that when the cows go to defecate or urinate, they're trained with the trainers to back up and they have a reference point here. They have something to solid to back up against and then everything falls into the drop from there. Um, he says if this was not here, there'd be kind of a taper and the cows wouldn't feel as secure. They're going to cheat forward and the back of the stalls are not going to be nearly as clean. He feels with this ball, this pipe here, they back up to the pipe. They put their feet on that pipe and everything ends up in the drop. Nothing ends up in the um, stall with a mattress. So this is a real uh, good feature. Students in the past have really uh enjoyed this so everything ends up down here the barn cleaner goes around takes everything out so so cow's butt head is over on that over there and they got the mattress so you can lift these up you grab them here and you flip them over if you need to get in and fix something or need to do something different 